Welcome to the channel, guys. Carter here with Edged Mindset. We're taking a look at the ProTech Rockeye. This is a side-opening automatic. It's a bit of a staple in the uh, the ProTech lineup. It's been around for a little while, and it is an absolute banger of a knife. I'll just lay it out there right now. This is a solid knife, but you might be asking, why? Why would you say such a thing? We're going to talk about that today. And undoubtedly, we're going to compare it to uh, kind of its little brother here, the uh, SBR from ProTech. Uh, both of these are Les George Designs. Uh, Les George is the name of a knife maker and knife designer. His name is Les, last name George. Um, he's been around for a long time. You may know him from the VECP line that he did. He was one of the first pioneers. I mean, that's a bold statement. But he was one of the first people to do the whole mid-tech thing back in the day. Uh, now mid-tech doesn't really mean anything. But it used to mean a lot because way back in the day you had production knives that were just straight up manufactured knives from like Spyderco or whatever. Then you had custom knives. There wasn't really much in between um, until the concept of uh, mid-tech came along. Which basically meant some of the work was machined and potentially outsourced but it ultimately was still handled by the maker and finished by the maker. That was the original definition of mid-tech. Now, uh, who knows? Because a lot of custom makers uh, really are just mid-tech makers. I don't know. It gets very confusing. But back in the day, he was part of that. The VECP was the name of a knife that was part of that whole thing. Uh, and it was very, very popular, very similar to uh, this rock eye here in overall kind of shape you know it was a titanium frame lock not an automatic anyways i digress <laughs> let's let's get into it let's talk about this knife so protec protec is a usa made usa company who makes usa made knives they've been around for a really long time if there's anything that you are going to take away from this video it's that protec uh really does a great job at their aluminum side opening automatics and they are very well known for how hard their knives fire. And they do fire hard. Like you can see, I think you can see. Maybe it's just because I can feel it. But my hand shakes. You know, and I'm uh, I'm a big guy. I'm 6'2", 250 pounds. I lift some weights. And this thing is throwing my hand around when I fire it. It's a very stout firing mechanism. Now, not everybody's into that. Some people like knives that opened a little more uh, gently and maybe a little more subdued, right? You don't want to draw attention to yourself. But for those that like a hard firing automatic, ProTech is a good choice. They also do a lot of cool collaborations with different companies, production versions of knives. For example, uh, SNG from Strider. They have an automatic version of the SNG, which is pretty dang cool. So let's get into the overall information on this particular knife. Enough about the company, enough about tangents. Let's talk about this thing that's in front of us. Three and a half inch blade, eight and a half inches overall, roughly speaking, right? Uh, we're not getting down to the millimeter here, but that's the overall size. So on the larger size of knives, if you like large knives, this might be for you. 4.6 ounces. For a knife this size, um, that is very, very good. And you can see how thick that blade stock is. This is no slouch. They do that because there's no steel to speak of in the handle, right? It's 6061 aluminum, enclosed construction right here, full clamshell. Uh, so it's very rigid, very tough. No blade play on this thing. It is rock solid. Protect does a really good job with their plunge locks um, in terms of not having play and being very, very strong. Uh, that being said, I would never call a plunge lock a particularly strong lock. So if that's what you're going for, button locks, plunge locks, probably are not the, uh, the right choice for you. Uh, but in terms of just being able to keep this knife in an open locked position without any play, it does the job. Um, and it allows it to be a, a more simple automatic knife. So this is coil fire, fire, coil fire operated. Coil, it's the firing mechanism. <laughs> the, the way that it stores energy is in a coil. So that means it wraps around this pivot here as opposed to having like a back spring or other mechanism like that. Um, 
And because of that, it's uh, very, very light. It doesn't need a big heavy spring in the back or anything like that. Just a nice little coil spring that goes around the pivot here that's relatively, relatively easy to replace. Not the easiest, but you know, it's not too crazy. This one is in 3V steel. It's actually an exclusive through PVK. So PVK got with ProTech. They did an exclusive version of this knife. And if you saw my video on the SBR uh, and the packaging that came with this, uh, came in PVK specific packaging, which is very, very cool. You don't see that too often. Usually exclusives are simply, you know, a minor config change, minor material change, all the packaging's the same. PVK was able to get specific packaging, which, you know, you may not think is that cool. Um, but to me, it means that uh, that relationship is strong enough that they would be willing to do custom packaging, which means PVK is awesome and they are awesome. Go check them out. They're a big supporter of the channel. They've got a lot of, let me get this out of here. See that? See that little guy right there? Boo! Get that out of here. I don't know what it is. I don't want you here. They're a big supporter of the channel. They've helped me out a lot and they're just really cool guys with a lot of really awesome knives. A lot of knives that maybe uh, other places don't have. They also are the only retailer I'm aware of that carry Paul Panak, um, a.k.a. Burn Knives, autos that I'm aware of. Uh, and he's really cool. Go check him out. That's just a, a wild tangent there. But they also have, you know, all kinds of stuff. They've got Microtex. They've got all the normal stuff, too. So a lot of inventory. They ship really quick. Very awesome. Okay, on to the knife. 3V Steel. You've got a beautiful general utilitarian blade shape. This has a cool kind of frosted DLC coating on it. I really, really like it. It's not a jet black. It's kind of like a dark charcoal type color to it, which is awesome. Uh, also good to coat that 3V. Not as prone to rust as people think it is, but it's still not a big stainless steel. So uh, having a coating on there just kind of helps things out, especially if you're in a little bit of a humid environment. Nice swedge on the top. Everything is done well. All the edges are nice and chamfered. Came razor, razor sharp right out of the box. Here is Les George's logo on the other side, signifying that this is, in fact, an authorized collaboration. Aluminum handle, 6061, like I mentioned. Firing button is nice and flush. No silly safety to mess with. Right, the safety is the button. You can see how this will not, oh, I guess I gotta close it. This will not fire if you just press on it, right? You have to intentionally get in there. Even if I just put my big old fat thumb on the top and press as hard as I can, it won't fire. I actually have to kind of get the corner or the tip in and intentionally fire that knife. Now that's the type of automatic I like. I don't want a safety. I don't want to have to mess with accidentally firing the thing, kind of like this one. See how it's got the button sticking out. I did this demonstration on the SBR. I'll do it again here. Safety disengage. You press it down. You know, you press on it. It's going to open up. So to keep this thing truly safe in your pocket, you want to engage that safety. But then that's just another thing you got to mess with. Another thing that can break. Another thing that could get accidentally actuated so i prefer this type looks really good i also from a visual standpoint i like the black with the charcoal and then the blasted uh, buttons and hardware looks really nice i like how there's no uh, handle hardware on the front here you've got some texturing that's been milled in here that gives you like a little bit of grip along with less is just really good handle design very good ergonomics the jimping here is about medium you can like, you know, it'll give you a little something, something if you press in there. It's not super aggressive though. So kind of medium of the road. If you like really aggressive jimping, this might not do it for you. Uh, but if you want something kind of in the middle, it's excellent. Gives you something to press on. Also a nice flat surface for bearing down in case you're doing some heavy duty cutting. Pocket clip is pretty boring. It's just a flat steel pocket clip. Very similar to like Emerson's design with the three screw hole right here. Uh, so it's not going to move on you. It's nice and stout and secure. It goes in and out of the pocket very well, especially with this smooth type three hard anodized surface. Uh, but it's not a lot to look at. You know, it's not titanium or anything cool. Very common with uh, Protex to have a, a clip like that. This one actually has a deep carry pocket clip, um, but a lot of Protex have this style pocket clip. Lanyard hole right there, standard stuff. Not a lot of people do lanyards, um, but uh, for those that do, there it is. Now, I pointed this out 
on the SBR, one knock I will say on both of these knives is uh, the hardware. So it's got hex bits on the pivot and the body screws, and then it's got Torx on the pocket clip, which is just, you know, not a big deal. Not a big deal. More than likely, those are two separate tasks anyways. If you're wanting to disassemble for cleaning and things like that, you're probably not taking the clip off. You don't need to. Um, or if you've damaged the clip and need to replace it, you're not taking the rest of it apart. But it's just one of those things where I don't like to see different styles of fasteners used on the same knife. Uh, it just kind of bugs me. Uh, make them the same. Now, I'd imagine this has to do with uh, what's available and affordable. You know, maybe, I don't know, probably something along those lines. I do love how these are flush fit like that. I mean, these are really nice. I do like these fittings. And I, you know, hex bits, they, they look cool. Everybody's got um, keys, Allen keys that they can use on here. So not a big deal. Uh, if you're a knife guy, you definitely have some Torx bits that are available. I don't know if that's why they kind of push for these to be Allen key or uh, hex bits. I don't know, but it kind of bugs me. Make them the same if you can. Nice and centered. Fires like a demon. Very good ergonomics. It is on the larger side. I didn't do a comparison to the PM2. I apologize for that. Let's do pivot to pivot. You can see they're very similar in size. Um, a little longer though. And you got quite a bit more handle going on here from pivot to pivot. So that, that's kind of interesting. The blade's a little bit longer than the PM2. I actually, you know, one of the one of the things that bugs me on the PM2 is just, you know, the short blade to handle ratio. Uh, but when you look at this, you actually say, wow, uh, seems like this rock eye is a little worse than that. I think the difference though, I don't know. Uh, I think it's this choil here kind of throws you off because uh, if you look at the edge to edge, it's pretty similar. This one's a little bit longer but it, it's way longer in handle than it is in blade, if that makes sense. So kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. Um, you can just see how little tricks of the eye can kind of mess with you. Because when I, when I look at the rock eye, I don't think that it has a little blade to handle ratio. Not particularly. Like it looks fine. Maybe it's just me. But I say, oh yeah, it's a normal knife. I guess if I really look at it, I can say, yeah, I mean, the blade's maybe a little short for the handle. But when I look at a paramilitary 2, that's the first thing I think of is, man, that's a little blade for a big handle. But when I compare the two, unless I'm missing something, um, this one's actually worse, right? Longer handle, at least if you're going from pivot. But even if you're matching up, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. All right, so the Rock Eye, uh, very, very cool knife. If you're into side opening automatics, especially aluminum-based ones, can't go wrong with these. Uh, not, you know. USA made. I think they're around two something brand new MSRP. You can obviously pick them up cheaper on the secondary market. They will serve you well. Protec has an amazing warranty too. They will take care of you. They are known for having a really, really good warranty. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. I dig it. I like it. I love 3V. All right, guys. Catch you later.